What's up guys, Celestra here again, bringing you another guide. This time it's for the VR mission, Rulers of the Outer Worlds. I just recently done this, and I've done it a few times now just to practice to see if this actually works. This was my very first attempt, just so you can see how sloppy it is. And it does actually still win me it. But basically, this is one of the last brutal VR missions. And you have to fight literally every single summon. And spoiler alert, you also have to fight Gilgamesh and Sephiroth at the end. Which is pretty goddamn difficult. Um, I've tried a different couple ways to do this, so I've tried the Aerith method where you recycle the limit breaks, that takes way too goddamn long, you end up spending about 40 minutes in this fight, whereas this method typically takes about maybe like 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes roughly, and as you can see, the main culprit that deals the damage in this build is Tifa. I was trying to find a way to incorporate her into my team like I had in the original remake, because she is still broken. <laughs> She's still very broken in this game. She does insane amounts of damage. So, like I said, this is one of my runs. This is the very first run that I actually completed. And as you can see, it's still a bit sloppy, but you can see the amount of damage Tifa actually deals. So, the basis for this build is... I'll show you the build at the very end of the video, just so you can see kind of how the gameplay works here. So the way this build works is we're relying on Tifa for the most part and we're mitigating damage with Barret and Cloud. So you make sure that they have haste and also the buff, I think it's bravery. And Barret uses lifesaver which essentially takes all the damage from the team members. And then if he gets too low you use Cloud to heal him up. You'll kind of see how it works throughout this video, but just a sort of brief explanation. So we want to make sure we're buffing up Tifa doing this. So the material that we have on essentially makes it so that we give our teammates extra ATB when we're repeating commands. And we're going to be repeating dive kick a lot in this. But the way you strengthen her, if you guys have played Tifa, you know she has unbridled strength. There's another move she gets called unfettered fury. It does the same sort of thing except it buffs her a lot more. And she can dodge quicker, her moves do a lot more damage. And when you equip her with things like strength up... Um, the enemy skill materia, dark side, all that sort of stuff. She does insane damage. And as you can see, she basically like four kicks Phoenix here. And <laughs> the only annoying thing is I can't seem to kill Phoenix before it spawns Kajata again, but it doesn't really matter because you're getting healed with the materia here. So you've made sure you've got elemental and fire. So this round you're really just healing yourself up when Phoenix attacks. But yeah, the way it basically works is buff Tifa with unfettered fury and then just keep dive kicking. Just keep dive kicking and use the other guys to like do some damage in the side and if Barrett gets hurt from using lifesaver just heal him with cloud you don't usually take that much damage because you're killing them a lot quicker but i'm just gonna talk through this just so you guys can kind of see how it works so as you can see i'm doing a little bit of damage here to kajata i would have probably dive kicked him to death at this point but he throws tifa with the the thunder so all we're doing is we're just basically holding down square and if you get stuck in the punch up animation where she does like a rising uppercut you can dodge out of it so that's how tifa is so quick at building meter so when you do that you literally just dodge and you'll be able to get out of this so you can continue your combo and build more meter so yeah like i said this is a very sloppy attempt i usually would have just restarted by this point but i just wanted to show you guys how sloppy you can actually be and still win this in my opinion the only hard part about this when you're using this build is Gilgamesh and potentially Sephiroth. This is the very first time you actually see me complete it. So when you see the Sephiroth fight, it is very, very sloppy. So just shows you can make a lot of mistakes and still win as long as you've got a decent amount of MP by the time you get to the end and you're quick enough to kind of get up and revive other characters while you can. The only thing I think this build could probably do with improvement is, I don't think Tifa has a revive in this. So if Tifa is the last one by herself, you're kind of screwed. But as you can see, she just dodges around Titan, and then he's literally just pressured here. And I think this also pressures Bahamut because it breaks one of the shields. So you have plenty of time to just keep dive kicking, dive kick, do whatever else you want to do. You can use Barret's skill where he absorbs like his HP and shoots for like massive damage as well but you don't really need it you just keep dive kicking punch build some bar double dive kick again and it, as you can see cloud and barrett's atb is building up because we're doing dive kick twice and titan's just flailing around but we're dodging around because tifa is insanely fast when she's 
got this max level chi. So basically what Tifa's whole game is, she has like a chi level. And when you use Unbridled Fury or... Uh, no, Unfettered Fury? Or Unbridled Strength, she basically gets like an extra level of chi. And it just makes her crazy fast. She can do crazy amounts of damage. She has extra combos, so when you're holding down square, when you're pressing square, she does different things. And yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. So here we're just going to keep dive kicking Bahamut, just like this. If he starts building up the the particles, you can break his wings and that will pressure him. But at this point, I was trying to, but sometimes they're a bit too high up or in awkward places, depending on where your characters are. So we just end up kicking the crap out of him. So just keep dive kicking. You can kick the wings like I'm trying to do here, but the, the left wing is obviously on his left side and the dive kick won't reach it. Dive kick will reach that, but you need to be really quick to destroy the wings. And that does pressure him, so I probably could have killed him here if I did that. But yeah, while he's doing that and focusing on someone else, just get your attacks in, and then he'll be pretty much dead. There you go. Another one done. This next one can be quite tricky. This is Odin and Alexander. Odin, if he hits you enough, he will literally just Zantetsuken you. Which is insta-death, essentially. And you don't want that. So you want to make sure you parry a lot. That's one of the main things about this. You still, you can just dive kick a lot, but you still have to have decent parry skills like that. Because if he hits you, I think it's like... It seems to be only about 6 or 8 times if he hits you. Or maybe 10. If he basically, if he hits you a fair amount of times, he will do Galahorn's warning or something, and then he will Zantetsuken the whole group, and you'll die. Unless you can stop him from doing that, but once he gets to starting up Zantetsuken, you have a very small window to actually stop him. So he's hit me a couple times here, but we just make sure we parry as many attacks as possible, because that's what his assess thing does if you've ever assessed these bosses. When you assess these guys, it tells you exactly how to beat them, and his is... The more he hits you, the closer he gets to Zantetsuken, and the more you parry or hit him, the closer he gets to doing a move where he will just basically pressure himself. So after you've done a fair amount of damage here, you could potentially get him into pressure state here, but if you do a certain amount of damage, he vanishes, and then you've just got to focus on Alexander. Alexander is a pushover. All you need to do is break each arm, and then they'll be pressured. And by the time you've pressured them, you've probably got moves that you can stagger them. So by the time I broke his arms, like right here, literally only takes like one dive kick. <laughs> you can also use Dark Side here to boost your power if you want, but I, I have the materia on, but I didn't really see the point in using it because you're damaging yourself, and you don't really want to take too much damage when you're doing this. So yeah, he is now staggered, and you will see how much damage dive kick does. So yeah, dive kick basically does like max damage almost. And then you just hold down square a couple times, and then dive kick again. And then Odin comes back in. He gets a couple more moves when he comes back in, but as long as you pressure him before he starts freezing your guys on the field, you'll be fine. And since I've got the limit break, I might as well, because this will basically trigger his stagger state. There you go, sleep near his fury. So as soon as he does that, just get all your stagger things up. So focus shot pretty much does it itself, but I just wanted to make sure by focus thrusting the cloud. And then just dive kick him a couple times, and that's it. And next, one of the most annoying ones in this fight. If you can get past Gilgamesh, you're pretty much set. I had to try this. The annoying thing is you can't just try him and practice him. I had to get to this point about like eight times before I could figure out how his moveset works. You want to make sure you parry as many things as possible and just avoid everything else. Because it will raise his stagger bar and obviously you're taking less damage. You don't want to take much damage in this fight. Because he does insane damage and he does so many status effects and stuff. Like he can turn you into a frog, he can silence you, he can do just insane amount of attacks but if you can pressure him once you pressure him make sure you stagger him and then just fire off all your powerful abilities 
So I believe when I'm fighting him, I make sure I use Barrett's ability where he takes half of his health away and shoots him. I'm not 100% sure I might have done that against Sephiroth. But yeah, this fight, I would say, isn't sloppy. But every other time I've fought Gilgamesh, I've been very sloppy. I'd always get hit by all of his things. And I'm surprised I actually managed to get past him to get to Sephiroth. But yeah, as you can see, every time you're hitting him, or every time you're parrying his stuff, he gets pressured really fast. And as soon as he's like this, make sure you stagger him. You don't get a lot of opportunities to stagger Gilgamesh. So as soon as he is staggered, do as much damage as you possibly can. And at this point, I used the, the time to also heal myself up because I knew I, I needed to make sure I stayed alive in this fight. So I'm trying to build Barrett's bar here, and then I'm going to use this move, which is called Lifeblood Cannon, which basically takes half of his health away and both of his ATB bars and does a massive amount of damage. I probably should have put the Genji equipment on Barrett at this point, because I, I didn't really do over 9999 with Cloud. But I'm just kind of putting my thoughts out here so you guys can kind of see my thinking. This is when he does his limit and can kill you, but his limit's not actually that strong, thankfully. Usually when he did it to me, a couple characters were still alive. They were on the brink of death, but they were still alive. So like that, just make sure you're parrying everything. As close to everything as you possibly can, because you're going to take no damage, and his stagger meter is going to go up. And when you do things like this, when you get the synergy abilities activated for Barrett and Cloud, make sure you dive kick a couple times in between because you need to do as much damage as possible. You could technically summon here if you really want to because I didn't actually use my summon throughout the entire thing. Didn't even use it against Sephiroth. But if you're struggling with Gilgamesh, I would suggest using it against him because he is a lot harder than Sephiroth in my opinion. Just with all the crap he can throw out and the fact he can turn you into frogs, silence you, all that sort of crap. But... Yeah, if you get him down, you're pretty much going to be able to kill Sephiroth, unless you don't parry the Shadow Chains. Because when Sephiroth does Shadowy Chains, it basically takes one of your characters out of the match. And there we go. Gilgamesh defeated. Thank God. Like I said, I probably tried this about 8 or 10 times, but it's it's more the fact it takes so long when you're, you're not used to how it works. So now we've got potentially one of the hardest fights. But if you've put your material like mine when you see it at the end of the video, you should be okay. You can swap some of the material out if you want, but for the most part you're just wanting haste, bravery, and make sure Barrett does lifesaver and have some sort of cure or prey or something like that, just so you can keep your guys alive. Make sure you have revive just in case your guys die, because as you can see in this, they, they do almost all die. Also, that's one thing I didn't know Sephiroth did, because like I said, this is the very first time I got here. Shadowy Chains, yeah, so he's got two of the people in Shadowy Chains now. Essentially just takes them out of the fight, and he can just do whatever he wants with them. He does target people that aren't controlled, which is unusual, which is why I was taken aback by it. Because usually, there you go, you have to parry that, otherwise he will do it to you. If I'd got hit there, I'm pretty sure I would have been dead. He does manage to trap all three of my guys initially, during some part of this fight, but... Yeah, I didn't realize he could just throw it at you from that distance. So, yes, this is what you don't want to happen. So I just left this in here as an example. Like I said, this is my very first time doing it. Because potentially, you would have been dead here. But I, ju I I was so panicked here. I was like, no, I must get everybody back up. But I'm so glad I dodged and just didn't instantly revive. Because he would have killed me and then I would have to restart my run all over again. And since Tifa can dodge really fast, I'm just making sure she's all the way out of the way. And Sephiroth will target her instead. But then Shadowy Chains, Barrett's back in them, which is very annoying. But this is all learning game at this point. But you guys can kind of see how it works. So you need to make sure you parry Shadowy Chains. And then he is basically a free target at this point. You just dive kick him straight afterwards. You can probably get two dive kicks in, just like this, and then dodge out of the way. But he is fairly easy compared to Gilgamesh. Because he only really does Shadowy Chains and then once he gets to a certain point... He starts using things like Faraga, Lazaga, all that sort of stuff. But he actually went into Faraga first. I'm not sure if that's what he always does. But we have Elemental Fire magic on. And what happens with that on our armor is we just absorb it. So we heal ourselves from when he casts Faraga. So we can just keep attacking him while he's doing that. Which is great. That's probably the only reason I won this. 
And I don't know why I did this. This is why I left this in here, to show you guys you can mess up a crazy amount and still win. So I should have just parried him. I shouldn't have tried to do that, because I, I could have literally been dead here. This is what you do not want to happen, ever. See? Barrett's the only one alive. <laughs> and he could have died there. But shadowy chains... Oh, last ditch effort. Literally the only thing I could do. Had to make sure Cloud got back up because he's the only one with a revive. So if Barrett died, then I'd be screwed. And thankfully, he doesn't kill Barrett right away with that. Oh, this was so intense playing this. Like, looking back at it just makes me have a heart attack even more. And since everybody's getting KO'd, they're all getting their limits, which makes this even easier. But as long as you can keep your guys up, you should be fine. And we stopped the shadowy chains there, thankfully, with the cross slash. But like I said, he doesn't really do very many moves compared to Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh has about 30 moves that he can use because he has loads of weapons. Whereas Sephiroth just does shadowy chains until a certain point, And then he'll start doing the Faraga, Blazaga, Thundaga, etc. But as long as you're good at parrying like that, then you're golden. If you get really good at the parrying in this game, you're pretty much a god. And I'm so glad I managed to parry a lot of this because it's very hard to win this fight without parrying. I didn't even try to dodge the shadowy chains because I'm not sure if you can. But just get good at the parrying because you will have that materia that allows the window to be a lot bigger. And I'm just healing the guys up here because I know they're going to take damage from Sephiroth's Octoslash. And Barrett's still alive, thankfully, because he has a very high health bill. And what we're going to do is we're going to get Tifa back up. But Sephiroth's coming after us, so we need to make sure we use one of our other characters. And since Tifa's been knocked out so many times, she actually has her, her limit again. But Sephiroth keeps stopping her, literally. I could have killed him so many times because of the dive kick combos. But he just keeps shadowy chaining her when when she's right next to him. Which makes it very hard to block it because he, he just manages to hit you with it. And we're so close. This is probably the longest fight. Gilgamesh and Sephiroth are the longest part of this fight. And Sephiroth has a lot of defense, so as you can see, that was um, that was Barrett's shot thing that he usually does, and it only did about seven thousand. Tifa actually did eighteen thousand there because of her double somersault kick. And as you can see, this is the best outcome you want: affinity fire. So he's going to just start casting Faraga, and we've got elemental fire magic on our armor. So what that does is it just heals us while we're fighting him. He will still slash you a bit, but when he starts casting Faraga, just unleash hell on him. Because Tifa's back up, she just needs to get herself back up and going with Unfettered Fury. And then just kick the crap out of him while he's healing you with Faraga. But like I said, you do have the summon if you do want to use it. But you need to make sure you pick one. Because you can't summon every fight in this. It has to be either Gilgamesh or Sephiroth, whoever you're struggling the most with. But like I said, I would suggest doing it with Gilgamesh over Sephiroth. Because Gilgamesh is actually fairly tough. Sephiroth is just... You need to make sure you parry at the right time in order to, to win. And I'm so glad I kill him here because he starts switching affinities. So he's in ice now. And this would have done a crazy amount of damage. So I make sure I kill him as quick as possible. And just like that, that's it done. It does take a while to get used to the fights, and it's very annoying that you can't just practice them. There should be like a, a single fight thing you can do where you practice each of these bosses. I know you can practice the summons, because you can fight them anytime you want, but you can't pra you can't really practice Gilgamesh or Sephiroth. But 
hopefully this has been helpful guys like i said i'll leave the the, the build at the end just so you can see it i'll talk over it so you can kind of know what's going on as well and then you can see how it actually works right guys so this is the build here we have the rune blade on we have the Cetron Bracer and we have we don't have the Got of Dameron because that's what you actually get for doing that. The Got of Dameron is amazing. It basically makes it so you have a full limit break at the start of the battle and it fills really quickly throughout the whole thing. But when I did this, I actually had the Genji gloves on, which breaks the damage limit. But I feel like there's probably a better one you could use for that. You can maybe just put something on that gives you the, the second level of the limit break already, which is... I believe Aerith still has on. Yeah. So the Enhanced Expeditionary Medal. That raises your limit level to two. So when you actually get up against Sephiroth or Gilgamesh and you do get your limit break, because as you saw, we actually got it a couple times, you could have this on and then you've instantly got your level three limit break, which is finishing touch, which is actually ridiculously powerful because it does multi-hits and it does crazy amounts of damage. So I would potentially recommend putting that on Cloud instead and maybe maybe putting the maybe putting the genji equipment on barrett because he has that move where he takes half his health and two atb bars and that can actually do quite a lot of damage but i think when you get further to the end and you fight gilgamesh and sephiroth they have really high defense so it doesn't really do very much but you can pick and choose the choco king cape is really good because it fills one atb at the start of the battle and then with the materia you basically have like two bars so yeah so let's get into the materia and stuff so ignore the Got of Dama Ring, replace that with whatever you want. The We'll go through the three characters first just to see their equipment. So Rune Blade, Cetron Bracer, whatever you want. Dragon Claws, Cetron Armlet, Fury Ring, because that gives her more damage. She also takes more damage, unfortunately. Battle Cry, Valkyrian Bangle, and the Choco King's Cape to make sure you go faster. And then for the Materia, we've got Magnify, Empowerment, so buff bravery. Revival, Magic Up, Cleansing. ATB boost. The funny thing is, I forgot to use this a lot. So, if you're like me and you don't have this normally, I would maybe just switch out for something better. Because I, as you can see, I probably didn't use that at all during that that whole video. But it is very good if you have a bar. It essentially doubles your ATB, and then you can do, use more things. But I probably could have made that a lot easier myself by using that. Anyway, steadfast block, precision defense, MP up, first strike. Healing, Magnify, Fire and Ice, and Elemental. So Cloud actually absorbs Fire and Ice when he actually takes damage, which is amazing. And then whatever summon you want, I've just got Gilgamesh because it's the one I've had on since since I actually beat Gilgamesh. For the weapon, you want ATB Charge Rate, Limit Break, Damage plus 10, Attack Power plus 20, and Magic Power plus 20. And then we've got Tifa. Like I said, you can put the Dark Side Material on if you want. I maybe used it a couple times, but when I started getting to Gilgamesh and Sephiroth, I thought it was best to maybe save what little health I had. Because as you saw, there was points where I survived by like a pixel. Enemy skill, because it has a lot of good abilities. So you get max HP, max MP, strength, magic. ATB boost, again, probably should have used it, <laughs> but I totally forgot. ATB assist, this is amazing. So this is why the other characters will get such big ATB boosts. So this is why your teammates get a lot of ATB because when you were, were dive kicking twice, they get a massive ATB boost and then you can use skills with them instead of having to swap between them and do stuff. You can like heal up and do whatever else you want to do in, in the meantime. And then he, uh, she has Titan on. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you have on summon wise unless you want like a really good summon like maybe Phoenix if you're having trouble reviving people. And then we've got things like Steadfast Block so you take less damage when you guard. Precision Defense, so this will help you to parry because it extends the block window. HP up, a little bit more HP because she doesn't really have very much normally. Skill Master, so after using three types of commands, you'll get more ATB, which is amazing. Subversion, I use this to dispel Gilgamesh's buffs because after a certain period of time, he will get like crazy buffs. You'll see about five or six buffs on him. So I use this to get rid of them. I don't think he actually got them in that video i'm not 100 percent sure but strength up because more strength more power elemental and fire magic so we heal ourselves then we've got atb charge up enhanced techniques attack power plus 20 and weapon ability plus five and then onto barrett so similar sort of thing magnify time so we can speed everybody up get more atb more atb more damage or more healing if we need to first strike 
large ATB increase at the start of the battle and with the Choco King's Cape we essentially have two ATBs so he can use haste and then use lifesaver at the same time. Disempowerment, so I didn't really use this very much but you can use it. This D-Brave essentially just makes them weaker when they actually attack you which is good but I didn't really use it very much. I feel like I could probably swap out a couple of these. HP up, MP up, precision defense, same again, steadfast block. You want these on basically everybody. Limit support transfers any increase to limit gauge to allies because we want to make sure we're doing more damage from either Tifa or Cloud and if they get their limits perfect because Tifa's is a double hitter and like I said if you give Cloud that medallion thing he will get finish and touch. I probably could have done this a bit easier if I have that, had that on him to be fair. Revival because we need to revive people. Fire magic and elemental and then we've got ATB bonus ATB charge up rate, limit gauge charge rate, and attack power. Yeah, so one thing I didn't mention was, is I actually put on shortcuts for this. I didn't really use them because I like pressing X and slowing down time and thinking and then doing the moves. But you can also set them so you can do this. So for example, when we go to combat settings and we've got Tifa, you can set it so dive kicks on L1 and square and then unfettered furies on L1 triangle. You need to press this once or twice in order to get the, the buff, depending on it because when you actually level Tifa up, Travels. as I'll show you here, just a little bit more in depth so you guys can kind of see how it works. When you go to level Tifa up and she's got her, make sure you've got as many of these as possible. You don't really need as many of these. You can reset your points if you're if you're unsure. I didn't give her this either because there's no point. She only uses her first limit break. I just made sure to get as many of these as possible because these are all buffs to your character. So with this one. This grants a 50% chance of entering battle with unbridled strength active. So that makes it a lot quicker. You don't need to spend ATB to get her up to the first level. And then when you use Unfettered Fury, it will take you to the next level of Unfettered Fury. It won't it won't revert to the unbridled strength one. It will be Unfettered Fury, which is awesome because it saves on ATB, gets you up there quicker, and then you can do more damage. But yeah, that's, that's essentially the build. You just make sure that you get Tifa up to Unfettered Fury level 2 which should be rise and fall or it's rise and fury or something like that you'll see it when her triangle move changes so it goes to omni something and then whatever else but yeah that essentially makes her very strong and she can just dive kick constantly and all you do is hold and then press square and then dodge out of the animation to build up her ADB really fast and hopefully this should kind of work for you guys like I said it's not a fast process the first couple times because it does still require a little bit of patience, a little bit of parrying, stuff like that. But hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, leave a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel because I always forget to say that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to see some of the other ones, so like the legendary ones, How let me know. Travels? But once you've done this, you well, get the, the got a Damarang anyway, which gives you instant limit break at the start, well, which makes them way, way easier and also makes hard mode easier if, if you want to wait until minutes. hard mode's done to actually do these. But yeah, you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.